Hey everybody, this is John Petrucci in Lisbon, Portugal, and you're watching Czech Sound TV. Last year, World Runner had this poll, and a dramatic turn of events was the most anticipated album for the fans. How did you react to that? I, I thought that was incredible. I mean, I saw the other releases that were coming up there, and I, you know, our fans have been a really powerful force in, in our career, you know, and, and responsible for a, a lot of our ability to continue on and our success on a worldwide level. So, you know, I, I it was really cool. In, in some ways, it wasn't shocking because I know that our fans come come out in numbers like that and really, you know, feel passionate about our music. What about the the Grammy nomination? How did you feel about that? That was amazing. Um, we we have uh, you know this is our 11th studio album. We have uh, submitted our music for Grammy uh, nominations before and have never received a nomination. So it kind of you know in in a world of popular music and all these different genres, it kind of almost seemed like an impossibility. Uh, especially the song that we we had submitted this time on the backs of angels is it's almost nine minutes long but when I got the call from uh, our manager that we received the nomination I was ecstatic just really 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 psyched it's amazing news and it must have been really fun for you because I saw your picture we were all dressed up <laughs> yeah it was it was a great night it was so much fun we we actually um, we had played in London on uh, Friday and we flew into LA we all met our families, all of our families came, so all of our wives, all of our kids, there was like 25 of us, everybody got dressed up in suits and dresses and, and we had just had a blast, it was really cool. About the set list for this tour, I read somewhere that she said that um, Bridges in the Sky was the obvious show opener, why is that? Well, when we wrote the song, just the way that it, it starts, um, the way that it kind of has this build and this sort of ominous uh, almost call. It's like a call for people to come in. The show's starting, and then and then the song kicks in in such a high energy way. You know, even in the re uh, recording studio, we knew that wow, this song is going to really make for a great opener. And it used to have a different system for the set list, right? You used to change it a little bit more than you do now. Why is that? Yeah, um, in the past we had uh, a more of a uh, a, a bigger collection of songs that we would have prepared and Mike Portnoy uh, used to be in charge of making the set list and he would go through a very methodical system of deciding you know which city we were playing and what song we played there last time and everything else and and the great thing about that was that for the fans who maybe come to multiple shows you would see a lot of different songs um, the flip side of that the bad thing about that as uh, as a band and, and as uh, you know a group trying to put on a professional production, you could never really get to that level because it was constantly changing. So this time around, you know, uh, we made several changes, obviously, and one of them is was a decision to say, okay, you know what, that was cool, but we're going to approach things a little bit differently. You know, when I go to see a Rush show, for example, just to name one band. The show is amazing. You know, you go to see Pink Floyd. The show is amazing. You go to see Muse, Metallica. The show is amazing. The reason why it's amazing on that level is because there is an element of production. You know, there's a theatrics to the whole thing. There's a way it starts, and there's a consistency. And we wanted to make that happen in our band. So when you see the show, you're going to see kind of a higher level of presentation and production. And the only way to do that is to have a consistent set for everyone, musicians, lighting, video, everybody. We're able to relax more because we know exactly what's going on. Everything is running in such a smooth fashion that it kind of, you'll see us on stage, we're a little bit more relaxed about the whole thing. Um, and we all love to play live, so that spontaneity is always gonna be there. And how's it been for you, because I know you've worked very closely with Mike, how was it for you, the creative process for this album without him? Um, yeah, you know, Mike, we, we started the group together with John um, many, many years ago. You know, we met at Berkeley and, 
we were only like 17, 18 years old. So we, we pretty much, you know, grew up like that from that part of our lives together. So, you know, uh, not only do we work together, but we're friends and our families are all connected and everything. So it's definitely weird, you know. It's weird when somebody like that leaves. Um, but I've always been a creative person, a creative force in this band, a creative identity in this band. So, you know, in a lot of ways, like, I, I sort of embrace, you know, having just a situation, like in this case, where there was no drummer. You know, we didn't even bring Mike Mangini in, where I can just really personally write between me and Jordan, between me, Jordan, and John, or me and John, or James, you know, and it's kind of like a more intimate sort of setting, and um, it's something we've done before. It's something we've done when we were really young, in bedrooms and basements and stuff, so I felt really comfortable as a creative person, as a composer, doing that. The best way that I found to kind of react to it was, you know, once, once the reality set in that okay Mike is really leaving this is you know he's not coming back this is what he wants to do you know the best way for all of us to approach the whole thing was to really look at it very clearly to roll up our sleeves and say and say you know what do we need to do in order to make our our career and this band continue on in the best way possible and and we sort of mapped it out in that way you know that the album was going to be recorded at this time that we need to audition drummers that we needed to book a tour at this time and we followed along on that path and that really helped us to get through everything in a very methodical and smooth way. After almost 30 years of a career, what do you feel that it's still left for a dream theater out there? Well, the great thing about being a band and, and you know, being signed to record labels and having a career is that every time that you go in to make a new album, it's a new opportunity to do something different, new, you know, to look at yourself as a creative person, as a musician, as a composer, producer, whatever, and say, you know, what, what else can we do here? You know, what's the next thing? How could we make, how could we top what we did in the past? Um, you know, I assume it's the same for like filmmakers and other people that do creative things you're given that opportunity to do it all over again. And besides that, as a professional touring band, as many countries we have not been to before uh, that we're looking forward to going and, and our career keeps growing. I mean, this is the first time we got a Grammy nomination. This is our second top 10 debut and this is 11 albums into our career. So we're still on the upward, uh, you know, moment, momentum. <laughs>